What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to another video looking at some tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5. So this video is the second part in my three-part mini-series focusing on the various functions in the R5 that you can use to get more dynamic range in your images. This video I'm specifically going to look at auto exposure bracketing and the functions that control it. So strictly speaking, auto exposure bracketing isn't only used for creating post-processed HDR images. However, with mirrorless technology providing a what you see is what you get perspective on the world, including real-time histograms, the need to bracket to get the right exposure has been greatly reduced. That said, for generating images with wider dynamic range, the combination of auto, uh, auto exposure bracketing and HDR stacking in post gives by far the widest possible dynamic range that can be captured. For example, on the EOS R5, if you're shooting at ISO 100 and using a seven frame stack with three EV spacing between the frames, you can capture, or the R5 is capable of covering something in the order of a 30 stop dynamic range. That said, bracketed and stacked HDR images, whether done all in camera or done in post, do introduce a temporal element that, uh, to the process that's not there in a single exposure. As a result, anything that moves in the frame can result in artifacts in the final image. In any event, we're talking about auto exposure bracketing here, so let's dig into the details. There are two ways to control auto exposure bracketing on the R5. The first is through the exposure compensation slash auto exposure bracketing menu. This is found near the top of the shoot to menu page. In the exposure comp auto exposure bracketing menu, the main command dial controls the auto exposure bracketing uh, amount. Alternatively, auto exposure bracketing can also be controlled using the number five shooting info screen. And I'll have a video coming up on how to customize the shooting info screens in the near future. So if that sounds interesting or useful to you, please consider subscribing. On the info screen, you can press the quick control button, then highlight the metering bar, and again, use the main command dial to adjust the exposure bracket. Basically, it works exactly the same as you would do in the menu entry. Of course, if you use this a lot, you can also add exposure comp the exposure compensation auto exposure bracket menu to one of your My Menu pages. And I've covered that in a previous video, which I will put a link to in the corner of this one. Unfortunately, unlike the EOS R3 or EOS 1DX series, there is no convenient button on the camera to quickly adjust the bracketing, nor is there a way for you to program one of the buttons to do that either. So the EOS R5, like most Canon cameras, allows for auto exposure bracketing to be done in steps that range from one third of a stop to three stops in third stock stop increments. Additionally, there are a few options available to control the behavior of the camera when shooting an AEB sequence. Though strictly speaking, those options also affect white balance bracketing too. So you'll find the three bracketing options on the Custom Functions 1 menu page, and they are Number of Bracketed Shots, Bracketing Sequence, and Bracketing Auto Cancel. So Number of Bracketed Shots controls the number of exposures that are made in the bracketing sequence. By default, this is set to three, uh, producing one image that's underexposed, one image that's overexposed, and one image that's uh, exposed at the specified exposure level. However, you can adjust this down to as little as two frames or up to either five or seven frames. Consider that if you're shooting with the maximum bracket increment of three stops and shooting a seven frame bracket, that sequence will cover 21 stops just in the exposure to exposure changes alone and that's ignoring the dynamic range covered by the sensor. The second option is bracketing sequence. This controls the order in which the bracketed images are shot and can be set to one of three settings. These are zero minus plus, minus zero plus, and plus zero minus. Ultimately, this controls the order in which the images are made, with minus being uh, representing the underexposed images and plus being the overexposed images. 
In the default setting of zero minus plus, the camera will shoot the zero biased image first, then the minus biased images starting from the most extreme to the least, then the plus images in order from least extreme to most. For example, if you're shooting a five frame bracket with one EV steps, using the first option would shoot the frames in the order of zero EV, minus two EV, minus one EV, one EV, and then two EV, while the second option would shoot the frames in the order of minus two EV, zero, or minus one EV, zero EV, plus one EV, and then plus two EV. The final option for bracketing is auto cancel. So enabling this will clear the bracketing settings and turn off the bracketing uh, mode when the camera is physically switched off. However, this won't happen when the camera goes to sleep. I personally keep this enabled as I found that I could sometimes forget to disable auto exposure bracketing when I was done shooting with it and then put the camera away. And the next time I picked up the camera and go to start shooting something, all of a sudden I'm getting brackets that I didn't want. So one final note on bracketing is the interaction with it and the camera's drive modes. Canon's firmware is smart enough that it recognizes that the camera is bracketing and then works to help you out as much as, you, as it can. So if the camera is set to one of the continuous drive modes and you have bracketing enabled, the camera will stop shooting at the end of the bracketing sequence even if you continue to hold the shutter release down. Moreover, when the drive mode is set to self-timer, the camera will wait for the specified time of the timer and then shoot the entire bracketing sequence in its entirety in one operation automatically. So there you go, auto exposure bracketing on the EOS R5. If you found this interesting, at least a little bit informative, please consider smashing that like button. Also, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.